Friends in Christ, good morning. Good morning. I hope everyone has uh, had a good start for the week after our, uh, our uh, after our brief snow squall yesterday. Wasn't that the, 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 the episode? That was sort of wild, wasn't it? The wind picked up, and all of a sudden, the snow started blowing, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" That was a, a I, I've been in a few snow schools before, so but it, it's just just so interesting to experience that like that that sudden burst of snow and wind that only lasts about fifteen minutes. But um, <laughs> if I if I can recall, I, I think we still have like about four more weeks of, of winter left. Yeah. So hey, you never know what we we might get. Uh, but whatever we get, we are thankful for it because. As uh, some folks say, every day is a day of thanksgiving and every day is a day of, of blessing for what God gives to us. There are a number of announcements in our bulletin this morning. I just wanted to uh, call your attention to uh, with the, with the, just going sort of, sort of like going down the line just briefly on some of our announcements. Uh, this coming Tuesday, uh, Bishop Tracy Bartholomew is going to uh, have a, uh, uh, I guess you could say a participatory conversation over a uh, book uh, titled The Warmth of Other Suns. And uh, she's actually going to be doing that, that, that book discussion with groups uh, via, uh, I, I believe it's sort of like Facebook. You can sort of log in and participate in that book discussion. It's going to be both on Tuesday and Thursday of um, uh, this week from 7.30 to 9 o'clock. So for those of you who are interested in that, you can go to the Senate's website and register to participate in that uh, conversation on over that book. Um, on Tuesday evening at, at 7.30, there are going to be a, a small group of us gathering in the parish house, and we are going to log on to that, uh, that conversation with the bishop from the, the conference room in the parish house. So we'll have sort of like a little contingent of folk from Holy Trinity participating in that book discussion uh, on, on Tuesday evening. And we're only, we're only gonna do it on Tuesday evening because Thursday evening is Bunko night. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you who, uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna try to figure out whatever Bunko is, so I'm gonna be there. But, um, for those of you who, are, uh, who have uh, the time and want to participate for a good a time of fellowship and uh, to, to please come to the, the Bunko Night celebration uh, this coming uh, Thursday. Um, before I forget, let me pass the sign up a book. Uh, and it also, Naomi says it has a sign up in sheet for our book nook to uh, contribute. So just keep track, keep track of, of, of the books in there. So as that goes around, I was reminded to remind you, um, <laughs> please do sign up. Well, thank you to those who have signed up for coffee or for flowers. However, there's openings. So if you can sign up for a coffee or flowers, that would be great. Um, if you want to go in on it with someone else and split it either, that's okay too. Just let the office know. And a reminder that Dina is in the office Monday through Thursday, nine to two. Thank you. And uh, there, are, uh, there are other announcements uh, that I invite you to, uh, to to look at in the bulletin. But I also want to uh, remind folks that next Sunday, immediately following our worship service, we are going to be having our annual congregational meeting, uh, and that's going to be in person. And it's also you can uh, uh, tune in by via uh, Facebook. Yeah. Zoom. Zoom. I'm sorry, Zoom <laughs> to, to do that. Thanks, thanks, Chris. Uh, via Zoom, and, and we'll have uh, uh, Chris. Is there going to be a, 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 a link to that that'll go out for that? It'll be the same link. Same link. Okay, great. And you won't have to even worry about it. You you can just stay stay tuned in. Okay, so. 
So friends in Christ, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship this morning as we uh, are blessed with a prelude from Peter.
The grace of our Lord Jesus the Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also Let us pray. O oh Lord Jesus, make us instruments of your peace that where there is hatred, we may so love, where there is injury, pardon, and where there is despair, hope. Oh. Grant, O oh Divine Master, that we may seek to console, to understand, and to love in your name, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 In the congregation, you may be seated. Our first reading this morning comes to us from Genesis the 45th chapter, and because I'm going to be referencing uh, this story in my sermon this morning, I'm going to uh, be reading uh, the, this, uh, this lesson this morning. A reading from Genesis. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they by his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into slavery. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve to, 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 to before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go to my father and say to him, thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me. You and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Here ends our reading. Thanks be to God. Our song this morning is Psalm 37, and I will be reading the uh, uh, verses in light, and I invite the congregation to respond by reading the verses in bold. Do not be provoked by evildoers. Do not be jealous to those who do wrong. For they shall sin with their heart, and like the green grass they will. Put your trust, your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and find safe pasture. Commit your way to the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord. And see what God will do. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently. Do not be provoked by the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. <clears throat> for evil um, for evildoers shall be cut off but those 
who hope in the Lord shall possess the land. And in a little while, they shall be no more. Even if they disturb about everything, they will not be there. For the lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in abundance of peace. But the Lord comes from you. You, O Lord, will help them and rescue them. You will rescue them from the wicked and deliver them, because in you they seek refuge. Our second reading uh, this morning is from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, and I'm just going to be briefly reading the introduction to our second reading. In the Apostles' Creed, we speak of the resurrection of the body and life everlasting using the metaphor of a planted seed and the story of Adam, Paul preaches passionately about the mystery of following Christ's perfect life into eternity. People of God, I invite you to please stand for the reading of our Holy Gospel. Just say, life 
your enemies. Why does Jesus have to say to us, love our enemies? Every so often, there comes a, a, a time in our uh, Sunday scripture text where it seems like the text just sort of, they just sort of jive, they just sort of go well together. And I think this Sunday happens to be um, one of those Sundays because in our first lesson, we see a wonderful example of what it means to love one's enemies, to love someone who has done us wrong, to love someone that has hurt, hurt us terribly. In our, in our first reading, it's a story about a man named Joseph. And for those of you who may not remember Joseph, Joseph had uh, a, a, a 11 brothers, and, uh, and, and Joseph's father was uh, a, a, a man named Isaac. And in our story, the, script, the text that we don't hear uh, is sort of an introduction to Joseph and, 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 and his brothers. And I, I'm just going to sort of give you a, a, a little bit of a condensed uh, a story of, of, of Joseph this morning. Joseph had, as I shared with you, Joseph had 11 brothers. And Joseph, I guess you could say, Joseph was, for lack of a better word, Joseph was a, a bratty brother. <laughs> Joseph was, was a, a, a brother who would, would, would tell on his brothers at, a, at, at the drop of a hat. He would run to his father, Isaac, and he would rat on all of his brothers and tell stories about his brothers. He would sort of, if anything bad was happening, it would, it would be Joseph was, was the first one to run to the father, Isaac, to, to rat out his brothers. Next to... Uh, Next to uh, a, 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 a another youngest brother, Joseph, I guess you could say Joseph was, Joseph was the favorite. As a, matter of, uh, as a matter of fact, Joseph was so favored by his father, Isaac, that one day uh, Isaac presented Joseph with a wonderful, wonderful, colorful coat that Joseph could, 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 could wear out in, in, in public to, 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 to show everyone just how, how loved he was by his father, by his father Isaac. But Joseph also was a, 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 a dreamer. And I, I guess he, 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 he wasn't a, a, a dreamer, meaning he had high hopes or high dreams. Uh, Joseph was, was able to, in, to interpret dreams. And in one particular dream that Joseph had, it had, uh, it had Joseph being a, 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 I guess, a, a, a bale of, of, of wheat, and Joseph's other brothers uh, also being bales of, of, of wheat. And in, in, it was interesting, in this dream, uh, Joseph, Joseph's brothers, they bow down to Joseph. And, and when, when Joseph told this, this dream to his brothers, oh, that set them off. That made them angry. Who do you think you are, Joseph, saying that we will one day bow down to you? Well, it just so happened that, that, that Joseph's brothers would one day bow down to him. But you see, what happens in the story of Joseph is Joseph's brothers get so angry with them that they devise a, a plan. They, they sort of devise a scheme to, to have Joseph sold off into slavery in, uh, in, in, in Egypt. And what they did was they 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 actually the their, their Joseph's brothers were out and they they, they were out uh, 
farming and, and tending uh, to, to animals and what have you. And Joseph comes along being the, the that bratty brother that he was. And I don't know what he, what he did, uh, but uh, one of the brothers says, you know what? Let's take that fancy coat that Joseph has and let's, let's dip it in animal blood and, and, and throw Joseph into a pit and we can go back home and we can say that, uh, that uh, Joseph was, was, was killed by some wild animal and here's his beautiful coat and as proof that, that, this, what, this, that this happened. Well, what really happened was there are a bunch of traders coming through. There are a bunch of traders coming through going to Egypt and they said, well, let's not, let's not, not let's not kill them. Let's just sell them off and, and just to, to, to slavery. And we could take the coat and say, yeah, dad, he, he some animal uh, mauled him, him to death. And that's, and that's what happened. Uh, these, these traders, they come through and they take Joseph away uh, to Egypt and the brothers go back to their father saying, oh, some wild animal must have killed Joseph. Well, as years go by, uh, Joseph, he begins to interpret dreams for the Pharaoh in Egypt. And one particular uh, dream that Joseph interprets is that of a coming famine to, to, to Egypt. It, was, it would, would last sev several years. So what Joseph does, he instructs the Pharaoh and the rest of the government officials to, to begin stocking up on, on grain and, and food and things so that they would be able to endure the, the famine once it comes. But when the famine does come, uh, uh, Joseph's brothers, they, they said, we need to go to Egypt and, and get some food because we know that there's food there. So they all, they gather all the brothers and they travel to Egypt to, to, to beg from food. And who do they come into contact with? They come to, into contact with their brother Joseph, who they had sold into slavery years earlier. And in the story, in the story, Joseph knows that it's, that it's his brothers who are standing before him, but the brothers don't, it seems like they don't yet know just who this important government official is who's standing before them. And then suddenly they realize that, that it's, it's, oh my goodness, it's Joseph, our brother, who we sold into slavery years ago. He is going to be ticked off at us. He's going to, he's going to be want payback. He's going to want retribution. And that brings us to our story. This brings us to our first reading this morning. Instead of Joseph being angry and, 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 and wanting to, to pay back his brothers for what they did to him. Joseph shows forgiveness to his brothers. Joseph shows forgiveness and at the end of our story, it says that Joseph, he kissed his, all of his brothers and he, and he wept on them. And then it seems like maybe his brothers it seems like there's maybe some sort of reconciliation that happens at the end of the story. It seems like there's an element of forgiveness that happens at the end of that story. Forgiveness, reconciliation. You know, not, not all events where forgiveness is called for has a happy ending like this story of Joseph. Because, because let's face it, sometimes forgiveness is hard, isn't it? Especially when it's someone who's wronged us or someone that, that has hurt us, hurt us deeply. 
This past week, I listened on YouTube to a sermon that was delivered on November 17, 1957, entitled, Loving Your Enemies. And it was a sermon that was delivered by the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. at Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia. And there were, there were several comments that Dr. King made in this sermon, but one of the comments that I'd like to share with you is this. Dr. King, he said in regards to loving one's enemies, Dr. King says this command is absolute. It is an absolute necessity for the survival of our civilization. And then he goes on in, in this sermon to talk about uh, uh, how one goes about loving one's enemies. He talks about analyzing ourselves because he says, maybe there's something within us that makes another person have an aversion to us or might ha have some sort of dislike for us. And then it's the second thing Dr. King speaks about. He speaks about looking at the other person as having some element of good within them, some element of good that would, that would cause us, that would challenge us to forgive them. And then the last thing that Dr. King talks about as far as how one goes about loving one's enemies is he talks about the three types of love that appear in scripture. He talks about the, the, a, a, a Greek word called eros. Then he talks about a, a, another word entitled the uh, uh, Phileo, which where we get our, 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 our word uh, Philadelphia, brotherly love. And then Dr. King talks about a type of love called agape love, which, which is a, a type of love which is a self-sacrificing, self-giving love. And then Dr. King talked about, uh, he, he talked about why why we are to love our enemies. And he simply says, we are to love our enemies because love has a redemptive power. Or in other words, Dr. King, he says that love changes people. Love transforms people. Love, love can, 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 can change a multitude of things, Dr. King says. That's why Jesus in this sermon on the Mount, which was the text that Dr. King was referencing, he was saying that's why we love our enemies. We love our enemies because love redeems us. Just like the type of love, that redemptive love that Christ has for us. Jesus said, do good to those, bless those, and pray for those, and forgive those. And love those who do us wrong. Love. The power of love. How many of you remember uh, the Michael J. Fox movie back in, I guess it was like back in the 1980s, entitled Back to the Future? You remember that movie, Back to the Future? It was a there was a, 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 a theme song in that, in, in, in that Back to the Future uh, movie in, entitled The Power of Love. You remember that, 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 that song, The Power of Love, written by Huey Lewis in the news? There's a, there's, there's a, there, there's a line or, or a refrain in that song, 
the power of love that I'd like to share with you. Huey Lewis says, it don't take money. It don't take fame. It don't take no credit card to ride on this train. It's strong, it's sudden, and it can be cruel sometimes. But it just might save your life. It's the power of love. That's the love that Huey Lewis was saying about. That's the type of love Dr. King was preaching about. And that's the type of love that Jesus a redemptive love, a forgiving love, an everlasting love. For as Dr. King says, it is love that will save the world and our civilization, even if it's a love for our enemies. Amen.
Phyllis, Gail, Linda, Debbie, Frank, Fran, Mary Frances, Larry, Elena, Don, Ralph, Barbara, Jose, Bob, Sue, Heather, Abby, Brianna, Maggie, Mia, Kirsten, Mary, John, Mavis, and Joe. Country states and local governments still being affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Places around the world experience unrest, especially areas in and around Ukraine. Those affected by violence in their schools, workplaces, and homes. Those who are lonely and have no one to pray for them. The unity of this church and its mission, peace in our world, peace in our nation, the care of God's creation, God of grace, we are prayer. We praise you for the saints who have inherited the fullness of your kingdom, as you have raised them to imperishable and eternal life, sustain us in faith by the promise of resurrection. God of grace, we are prayer. Our prayer. Since we have such a great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus the Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. People of God, may the peace of Christ be with you always. Amen. And may we take a few moments to share Christ's peace with one another. Peace be with you. Savior Jesus the 
Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs and the angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending <laughs>
Friends in Christ, as you are able, I invite you to please stand. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ may strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We give you thanks, gracious God. We have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Grant you the riches of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite the congregation to please remain standing for our benediction this morning. Friends in Christ, Jesus said in our gospel lesson this morning to love your enemies. And again, I would like to leave you with that refrain because it's a song that some of you will probably be thinking about and singing and humming for the rest of the day. The power of love in that, again, that refrain <laughs> is it don't take money and don't take fame, don't need no credit card to ride on this train. It's strong and it's sudden and it can be cruel sometimes. But it might, it might just save our lives, and that is agape, agape, the power of love. Thanks be to God. Thanks. Friends in Christ, I invite you to receive the blessing at this time. Right? Yeah. God who leads you in pathways of righteousness who rejoices over you and calls you by name. Bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.